Well, hello, tubers. Have you ever wondered how much electricity a modest size RV uses? Well, we're going to talk about that today. Well, hey, tubers, I got the numbers in. You're going to be surprised at how much electricity a modest size RV uses. And my RV is two inches shy of 23 feet. And when you're plugged into 30 amp, hopefully you're not paying for the power. Like I almost never have to pay for power, thank goodness. So let's go through the numbers. First of all, this is summertime. So right now I'm using air conditioning seven hours a day. And I've looked at the numbers on the decal of my R, uh, RV air conditioning, which I believe is a Dometic. It's 20 amps. And I use it seven hours a day with uh, about a 75% uh, duty load. So it's sucking the big power about 75% of the time, I've noticed. That alone is 12.6 kilowatts a day. Okay. Now the second biggest load you're going to come across when you're plugged in is your fridge. Mine uh, is a Dometic. It uh, consumes 2.7 amps. Uh, an hour uh, so if you do Ohm's law and you multiply that out uh, times 24 hours a day with a 50% uh, duty load which is I think typical that's going to change according to ambient outside temperature obviously but summer obviously it's going to be cycling more that I have figured out uses 3.88 kilowatts in a day TV that's very very gentle especially the LED uh, I've got two TVs but one is is used a lot but if we only counted three hours a day, that'd be only 120 watts, 40 watts an hour. That's like 0.12 kilowatts. So that's that's nothing. Now phantom loads. People forget about the phantom loads. That's all those little uh, chargers that you got plugged in, uh, toothbrush chargers, shaver chargers, uh, things like that. That's at least 50 watts an hour times 24 hours a day. 1.2 kilowatts. Now, of course, if you get really thrifty on the pennies, you can put all that stuff on power bars or unplug them when you're not using it. But for the sake of this discussion, you know, 1.2 kilowatts is not a lot of energy unless you're boondocking. So, you know, you, you really don't even have to worry about it. Now, there's the miscellaneous uh, onboard uh, usage of power, and that's like your uh, charger that's built in. Um, anything else you forgot about and your lights and since they're LED they're quite efficient I would say that's about 100 watts an hour for all of that so that would be 2.4 kilowatts in a day now that would total out to 20.2 kilowatts a day now I don't know about you but I've actually lived in apartments where I had free uh, heat and hot water and I would only use about three or four kilowatts a day, and that's just TV and lights and the refrigerator. So uh, an RV is surprisingly not that efficient because most of your losses for heating or air conditioning is out the front of your RV in the cab. So the more you can insulate and isolate that out, the better, I guess, your efficiency would be. But I definitely find that um, I use more electricity in the summer for air conditioning, and it's easier to heat than to cool in terms of power consumption. So when we bring it out for a 30-day uh, cycle, we're talking 606 kilowatts in a typical month. Now here in Canada and British Columbia, we're lucky we only pay 8.5 cents a kilowatt hour plus tax. So my electrical bill, if I actually paid for it, would be still under $60 a month. Now that number changes for people who are, you know, big users of a lot more electricity or pay a lot more for it because many parts of the U.S. and many RV parks, they charge a lot more than 8.5 kilowatts, uh, 8.5 cents, pardon me, uh, per kilowatt hour. So make a comment what you're paying for electricity because I know some of you guys are paying 15 or 20 or more cents per kilowatt hour and you're living in the desert in the summer which is one hell of a electrical bill I imagine so what's your thoughts put them down there in the meantime folks stay safe Keep the wheels on the ground. talk to you soon bye bye